So let's get straight into the word. I know many of us are waiting for the word for today because it is a special day. Am I right? It is a special day. Good Friday is such a special day. Amen. Isn't it a very good Friday? Not just this Friday, but every Friday has been good. Amen. To spend time in the presence of God is the best thing to do. And that makes a Friday or any day good. And today, even as we are remembering the death of Jesus Christ, it makes it much more special. So what do you do on a good Friday? Do you sit and mourn? Do you sit and cry? Or you are going to celebrate the love of Jesus Christ. Are you going to sit and cry just like how you sit and cry for someone who you lost in the family? They are dead and gone and we will meet them one day in glory. Amen. Those who have died in Christ is going to rise back. Amen. But I am talking about someone who died and rose again. So is there a need to sit and mourn? Is there a need to sit and cry? Is it not so good? Is it not so essential? Is it not so indispensable that we celebrate this day? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A good Friday is such a good day that God has made for you. Amen. And I'm not even worried about whether it was a Friday that Jesus died or not. But we are here celebrating the love of Jesus. Amen. One day. The Lord Jesus died for you and for me. Whether it was a Friday or a Wednesday or a Monday or a Tuesday. But one day, that day that he chose, that the Lord gave himself up on the cross. That the Father God, the Father in heaven chose to give his own very son. For your sake. We are celebrating that day. And it is a day to be celebrated. Not to be mourned. Because my savior has risen. Because the tomb is empty. He is not residing in the tomb anymore. He rose again. Yes he died. He was buried. But he rose again. Amen. You need to think of the, of the death of the Lord Jesus and embrace it in your life so that you will also embrace the resurrection of Jesus in your life. Amen. By which your old has gone and the new has come. The old has passed away and the new has come. Amen. What do you think? The title of the sermon for today going to be you know what I have named it it is so special it is very special to my heart and this is what the Lord put in my heart to speak to you on a good Friday I'm not going to speak on the seven sayings on the cross or uh, like the conventional way it is done on a good Friday but I'm going to talk on a very good old topic. And the title of today's sermon is called Love. L-O-V-E. Love. Say love. You know what? Jesus is the expression of love. Jesus is the manifested expression of God's love for you, for me. How many of you agree with me? If you agree with me, lift up your hands to the heavens and say an amen. Make it louder so that the Lord will hear that you are acknowledging the death of Christ. 
and that you are owning that Jesus died for you and that you are owning that Jesus rose again for you let the heavens hear it amen as you declare there's going to be power manifesting out of your own lives because the resurrection power of Jesus is not simple Paul writes it this way he says let the eyes of your understanding be open to the power with which God raised the father God raised Jesus from the heads it wasn't easy and there you get this word called dunamis amen it is it is some power that was compared to the dynamite from from that word comes the word dynamite itself amen such is the power that was exerted to bring Jesus back from the heights and Paul says that that kind of power is available with the ones who believe in Jesus it is available for the ones who believe in Jesus and it is available to be used by the ones who believe in Jesus do you believe that you can walk in the resurrection power of Jesus I know it is Good Friday it is not the resurrection Sunday yet but am I preaching a resurrection sermon no but if I have to think about the death of Jesus if I have to think about what happened on the cross I cannot withhold myself from thinking about his resurrection that's the truth God is good God is love God loves you Amen He is so mindful of you God is very mindful of you People of God wherever you are whatever location that you're watching me from maybe you are in the farthest part of the earth and you're watching me but I'll tell you a good news today God loves you no matter what you were in the past no matter how you were God loves you the Bible says that even when you were enemies God chose the father God chose to give his only son for your sake even when you were disobedient amen so that by the knowledge of this and the confession of this and by the owning of this you will become saved that no one can snatch away the salvation that you are experiencing the freedom life that you are experiencing amen say an amen own it for yourself people today wherever you are the Lord is mindful of you I want to tell you God loves you and that is why he wanted me to speak to you on the topic called love it may look very old it may look old-fashioned old school but let it be but do you not experience fresh love every time when you meet your loved one it's a simple question that I'm asking you so if that is so fresh like that if I'm going to talk about the love of Jesus the love of God for you is it going to be an old topic is it not fresh today are you not experiencing the love of God today as fresh as it is do you not feel the embrace of Jesus around you God loves you he's so mindful of you amen so let me go into the sermon I've got five things to talk to you about one is love love itself 
I want to explain to you love in a different way. We know what love is, yeah? We are people, we have senses, we have families, we have our friends, we have our own people who we show love, we, who, from who we experience love, we know what love is. But then I want to explain to you in a different way that you will understand what God's love means. God's love is agape. Amen. Say agape. It's not philia. You and I may be experiencing philia love among people. But agape is the altruistic love which means no matter what. There is no expectation from you to love you. But tell me honestly, how many of you love someone else without an expectation? Oh, I know you're saying that I don't love anything from anybody that I love them. But do you not expect love back? But I'm, I'm, I'm asking you a question today. Did God do this in expectation of love or he simply expressed his, he lavished his love for his people and then let them experience that love and then do what they want. He's not a pushy God. Amen. He's not pushy. He wants you to experience his love. Then do what you want to do. Amen. Today he wants to tell you, I love you. He wants to tell you, I love you. Can you tell that from your hearts? Are you going to say, thank you for your love? Can anyone say that? If I say, I love you to someone dear, can that person tell me, thank you for your love? Or that person will say, I love you too. Which sounds right? Are you going to thank God for the love? Or you are going to express your love for God? Amen. Are you experiencing the love of God today, my people? Amen. Can I see your hands lifted? Though I am not able to see you, but the, but the Lord... But the heavens are witnessing this. If you are lifting your hands in your own places, the Lord testifies, the Holy Spirit testifies of your heart. Amen. Amen. So can I read to you from Romans chapter 8 verses 31 onwards. So I said I'm going to talk about five things. So it is love. Second one is love uh, manifestation. Third one is love declaration. Then fourth one is love illustration. Then the fifth one is love implication. Are you ready? Are you ready to receive God's word? He wants to speak to you today. If you are ready, turn your Bibles with me to Romans 8 verses 31 onwards what then shall we say to these things what then shall we say to these things if God is for us who can be against us amen are you declaring that boldly today if God is for us who can be against us tell that out boldly see the Bible says, if I boast, I boast in the Lord. It is okay to boast, but you boast of the Lord. And, and put your head up and say, if God be for me, who can be against me? Amen. He is for you. God is for you. Paul writes like this. He who did not spare his own son. I'm teaching about love in a different perspective for you to understand because you know what the feeling of love means but you should really understand 
what the bible teaches or how the bible portrays love it is very different it is very different it is about a sacrificial heart of a father that means love it is about a father a creator god loving his people without expectation amen so i'm going to read to you from romans 8 31 to 34 he who did not spare his own son but gave him up for us all how will he not also with him graciously give us all things verse 33 who shall bring any charge against God's elect he starts like this right if God be for us who can be against us now you see where he goes who shall bring any charge against God's elect you are God's elect and nobody can bring any charge against you because all the charges against you were scribbled. Say an Amen. Amen. The legal demands that stood against you were cancelled. The punishment, the due punishment that had to go with you in order those legal demands were demanding from you were scribbled off on the cross by Jesus Christ amen now I'm reading to you 33rd verse who shall bring any charge against God's elect it is God who justifies you are justified my people you are justified it is God who justifies you don't need anybody to justify you and you cannot even justify your own self but God justifies you. Amen. If you trust in Jesus, if you believe in Jesus, you are justified. Today, take this good news with you on a good Friday that you are justified. Hallelujah. Amen. 34th verse. Who is to condemn there is nobody to condemn you. Amen. Christ Jesus is the one who died. Christ Jesus is the one who died. More than that, who was raised. More than that. Now I told you, if I talk about the death of Jesus on the cross, how can I not think about the resurrection of Jesus? And Paul here says, he died more than that he was raised who is at the right hand of God who indeed is interceding for you oh what better who like who is the better intercessor that can stand for you none of us there is no better intercessor than Jesus who is interceding for you Amen. Say, lift your hands up and say, Jesus is my intercessor. Amen. Do you know what intercession means? Someone who stands in the gap, praying for others. Amen. And Jesus is your intercessor. You cannot have any better intercessor than Jesus himself. He intercedes for you. So nobody can condemn you. Amen. Amen. So do you not see that this is love? This is how I want to give you a definition of love. Do you deserve anything like this? But God did it for you. Amen. You know why? Because He loves you. That's why, you know what? We have received, so we give. We have received love so we love it's not that we love so we need to be loved no it's not like that the equation is different you are loved first of all you are loved 
so you are expected to love say an amen is the equation falling right in your lives today amen correct all your misunderstandings don't tell me that you love God and you brag about it more than you brag about how God loves you amen amen your love is nothing compared to God's love for you he loves you God loves you amen now I want to take you to another scripture portion and come back here I said I'm going to talk about love and then I want to show you love manifestation right I'm just going to dwell on the scriptures and nothing else and it is going to speak compositions of love of God amen do you believe that the Lord is speaking to you is your heart touched today is the scripture talking to you is the word of God speaking right into your hearts if you are open if you are receiving I'm telling you your life forever will be changed and you will be an instrument of love God expects you to become or be an instrument of love we are the ones who will express Jesus the expression of Jesus if people see you they should see Jesus in you amen how is that going to happen amen if not for love first love love is the key the greatest commandment say an amen amen so I'm going to take you to the first letter of John uh, 1 John 4 verse 8 right so 1 John 4 8 anyone who does not love love does not know God because God is love if you are talking about God and if you do not love which means you actually don't know God amen that's what he's trying to say he's saying that it is because God himself is love God is love period amen do you understand what love is love means God God means love say an amen amen ninth verse goes like this in this the love of God was made manifest among us that God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him Amen. in this so how you are able to understand that God is love this is how you need to understand how you are able to understand that God is love he says in this the love of God was made manifest so the manifested expression of the love of God that God sent his only son Jesus into the world so that we might live through him if you are living you are living through Jesus say an amen you are living today because of Jesus amen Jesus is the manifested expression of God's love for his people that's what John is saying here say an amen Tenth verse says, in this is love. In this is love. Not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Not that we loved God, but he loved us. Firstly, you need to understand before you started loving God, Amen. How many of you who newly came into Jesus thought that you know what? Suddenly I started loving God and things started changing in my life. Excuse me, I want to tell you something. Even before that, because God loved you, He made a channel of love called Jesus so that you will experience God's love. And that's how you have this feel called love. Amen. That's how you know what love is. 
This is the ultimate expression of love. The manifested expression of God's love for his people is Jesus himself. Say an amen. Are you enjoying the sermon? Is God speaking to you? Amen. Now having understood this. Now I was reading from John's writing. But you know what? These people who had the revelation of God, all of them had the same understanding about Jesus. All of them had the same understanding about the expression of the love of God. Amen. That is why Paul says, we are one church. Among us, there shouldn't be any divisions. Amen. He wants our understanding to be one. Amen. Amen. So now, having understood or having known what God's love like this, like how John is writing, Paul is saying here, coming back to the same scripture as we read in Romans 8. And I want to head, I mean, title this as love declaration. Now, out of seeing the manifestation of love, Paul is making a declaration out of the enjoyment of love. Right? So now I will read to you the continuation of the 8th chapter of Romans from where I left. 34th verse we read. Now I am going to read to you 35th verse. Now because this is how love worked. Jesus was the expression of love. In him we found love. So Paul is saying who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Amen. Paul understands because he has experienced the love of Jesus Christ. Have you experienced the love of Jesus Christ? If you have experienced, you need to make a declaration like this today. Amen. Don't you worry about what is going on in the world. Don't you worry about what is going on around you. Yes, it may be a difficult situation. But are you going to let that difficult situation pull you down and keep you down? Or you are going to make a bold declaration like how Paul is making here. Do you know how much of trouble that Paul went through? How much of prison, beating up, stoning, all that he went through. Now here Paul says, 35th verse, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? Can these things separate me? And he is also adding as it is written. So he counts back to what was written in the past. So he believes in the word. As it is written, for your sake we are being killed. All the day long we are regarded as a sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. So you can become conquerors only by the one who loves you. Amen. You have been made conquerors on basis love. Do you get this right? He's saying in all these things. So we tend to use this word in so many places. Yeah, right? We are more than conquerors. So in what we are more than conquerors? Ask this question to yourself. Amen. In all these persecutions, in all these sufferings, you are more than conquerors through Him who loved you. Amen. I want to see, sorry, I'm repeating that, but I want people to lift your hands and make it as a witness today. Let the heavens see. Let the angels witness. Let the Holy Spirit witness for you. Amen. Nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. Because His love is so deep. 
Amen. If you have made that declaration, I want to tell you how as an illustration, illustration is a, is a picture, but this illustration is in reality. Amen. How God illustrated his love. I want to turn your Bibles to 2 Corinthians. Before that, I want to um, remind you. I should, I should give you a, um, a recap of what we spoke even during the start of the month. Shall we just watch that video for a minute? It's, it's a one minute video we're going to watch and you will be strengthened. Jesus, who was made sin, who knew no sin, so that in Jesus we might become the righteousness of God. If you understand the scripture clearly, this scripture calls you the righteousness of God. Now you need to take position. You need to know that you are a comeback. And by this comeback position, Knowing you are a comeback, you are going to come back right now. And you are going to stand in the gap for the so many others that are suffering in the world. You are going to get things restored by this comeback position. You have a right standing with God and from there you will pray. Amen. God bless you. To that. Can I read it once more? No, I was speaking in terms of how you have been given a right standing with God so that you will stand as intercessors for his people. Amen. Now I want to recall that and tell you how the love of God was illustrated by what Jesus did on the cross. Amen. I want to read to you again from 2 Corinthians 5, 21. For our sake, he made him to be sin. Amen. For our sake, Jesus was made sin, who knew no sin. He was not born out of sin. Amen. He was not born in sin, right? But he was made sin. Jesus was made sin. For your sake, for my sake. So that in Him we might become the righteousness of God. Amen. All the righteousness that Jesus carried was imputed over you. And all the sin that you had in you was imputed over Jesus. Amen. That's, that's the exchange that took place on the cross. For your sake He was made sin. Right? Now, I want to recall the scripture that says, the wages of sin is death. Amen. Romans 6.23, it says, the wages of sin is death. Whereas, the gift of God is eternal life. The free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Whereas the wages of sin is death. Now Jesus was made sin for our sake. Right? And the law says that wages of sin is death. So the sin needs to be paid its wages and which is called death. Now the scripture says in 2 Corinthians 5.21 it says he was made sin. Amen. Now Jesus hanging on the cross. He is the personification of sin on the cross. Jesus on the cross is the personification of sin. Say an amen. Amen. What was hanging on the cross? Sin was hanging on the cross. Whose sin was hanging on the cross? Your sin was hanging on the cross. My sin was hanging on the cross. Jesus was made sin for our sake. And because of that, he had to go through what he went through on the cross. Wages of sin is death. 
death needs to be paid as wages to sin. Amen. So was it important for Jesus to die? Yes, it was important for Jesus to die. Without his death, we couldn't have had what we are having today. Amen. We couldn't have had the freedom life that we are enjoying today. The Zoe life that is given to us. Without Jesus' death, it wasn't possible. Say an amen. So sin was hanging on the cross. So now you understand, whatever you have to pay, it is paid for. Unless you know it, you can't operate in it. Unless you know that you are freed from something, you will still be under bondage. Say amen. You will still be under the law and it will lead to death. That is why the scripture says, if the son delivers somebody, he is free indeed. Amen. You shall know this truth and the truth shall set you free completely. Amen. It is all about the Son of God who hung for you. Who was on the cross. He was sin himself hanging on the cross. Amen. So now having understood that that's how God, the Father God, illustrated His love for you and for me by giving away His own Son. See, we started right from, from Romans 8.31 or 32, which said, He did not spare His own Son, the Father. God did not spare His own Son because He loves you. Amen. So now you see, love means a sacrificial heart. So if you see in the world also, many leaders died for their people. Actually speaking, many leaders who are in the flesh, they died for the people. But someone who is willing to give the son, See, I may be ready to die for my people, but the question is, if I am ready, if I will be ready to give my son as a sacrifice, oh, that's not easy. People, I'll be ready to die if I think about my son's, my son dying, right? So the Bible tells you that is how much God loves you. He did not spare his own son that he gave him for your sake, for my sake, because he loves you, because he loves me. Say an amen. Amen. Now having understood this, how is it going to affect you? So I said five things, right? Love, love manifestation, love declaration, love illustration, and fifthly, love implication. How is this affecting you, how this knowledge of love, how after knowing that Jesus died for you, that God loved you so much, how is it going to affect you? What is the impact of God's love in your life is the question today. Amen. So I'm going to read to you another scripture from Romans chapter 13 verse 8. Owe no one anything except to love each other. The Bible says, you have to be indebted. You have to consider as a debt that you have to be paying continuously or perpetually paying. Owe no one anything. Okay, leave that part for another day. That is about about a financial owing. The Bible says, owe no one anything except to love each other. Which means, so 
you you understand he is trying to make us understand how important it is to consider paying back debts you understand so he says consider it a perpetual paying back of debt of love except to love each other it was for the one who loves another for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law amen law fulfilling by love fulfilling of the law by love those of us who have misunderstood law and and anything to do with law grace love you need to understand this Jesus says that he has not come to destroy the law but to fulfill the law and how did he fulfill the law it is simple to understand from this scripture portion it says one who loves another has fulfilled the law amen fulfilling the law by love eighth verse says like this right look at the 10th verse in this chapter Amen love does no wrong to a neighbor therefore love is the fulfilling of the law love does no wrong to the neighbor therefore love is the fulfilling of the law say an amen amen you understand how jesus fulfilled the law he fulfilled the law by all means and because of that we are counted as having fulfilled the law you know how by the implication of love if you do not love someone the bible says you might be saying on that day that i prophesied over somebody that i healed somebody that i was speaking in tongues that i chased demons but the bible says if you do not have love he's going to ask you who are you do i even know you is that not a serious thing my people to love one another Amen. Today is the day that you are going to decide that you will walk in the love of God. Amen. Amen. Are you going to judge people? Are you going to condemn people? Now tell me how righteous were you? Were you not forgiven? How is it difficult for you to forgive someone else? Have you not enjoyed the love of God? how is it difficult for you to love someone why is there hatred among us why is there bitterness among us let the love of god cover you 